Hello, I'm Michael Glass from michaelglass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial future. Before we begin our video, you want to start off with our disclosures. Any symbols you see today should not be inferred as a trading recommendation. No matter what form of investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options, they all have a level of risk associated with them. Any strategies we show today are for informational purposes only. Future results are not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is only your own responsibility. Trade at your own risk. So this is our stock market technical analysis trading plan. In our video, we'll look at the past week's economic calendar and also look forward to next week. We'll see what happened as far as the most recent price action to identify key support and resistance price levels. We're going to look at the charts of the market leaders, Apple, Google, Goldman Sachs, Priceline. We'll take a look at those. We'll look at the dollar, gold, and crude oil charts to see if there's any leading sentiment. And finally, we'll have an education spotlight at the end. As we look at the week that was, we see that all three major indexes, the Dow, the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, all fell for the week. Two are up for the year, the Dow and the NASDAQ, while the S&P 500 is down just a little bit for the year. And we basically fell about 2.5% for the week, and that snapped four straight weeks of gains. We know how great October was for the market, uh, November starting off a little bit sluggish. Uh, with the weak market, uh, we saw found support in the dollar. As the dollar, as we know, strong for the market in October, the dollar basically fell off the cliff in October. As far as... Uh, what drove the market this week, we would have to say it was pretty much overseas news. And once again, we are dealing with Greece. Uh, Greece uh, actually threatened, I think they're having a confidence vote on actually pulling out of the Eurozone uh, 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 bailout uh, plan for them. They talked about bailing out, bailing out of the bailout. Um, and that sank the market for a couple of days. And then you know, I guess there was a reassurement. We also had the G20 with still no real firm uh, plan on how we're, they're going to protect Greece. And if Greece f fails, that's going to f uh, fail the euro, that's going to fail the dollar. So there's definitely a worldwide impact of what's going on here in Greece. We really didn't have any corporate news that affected the market this week. And we had some really uninspiring uh, economic data. Employment states, which wasn't inspiring, although we did have 9% uh, versus 9.1% of unemployment. But we only saw 80,000 when consensus was 100,000 jobs. FMC kept their rates at 0 to 0 0.25. They cut their forecast for 2011, and they've cut their forecast below 3% for uh, 2012. So really uninspiring on the economic front. Going into next week, we really don't have any uh, earnings that's going to really impact the market, um, and not a lot on the economic calendar. Maybe consumer sentiment on Friday, maybe Bernanke says something on Wednesday, or the Bank of England announcement on Thursday might have something. Uh, but overall, it's, it's a light week for uh, news, and uh, we're getting ready to get into the the period of time where many people are taking the money out, especially once we get to the closer to Thanksgiving and, um, you know, begin their holidays for the year. So we'll see how much volume is going to uh, continue to stay in the market here over the next couple of weeks. Let's pull up the charts and take a look. Okay, we are starting off by looking at the S&P 500 daily chart. And where we left off last week was basically right here we hit a, a potential resistance point of 1300 and we put in a doji and so we talked about will this 200 moving average act as support or will we break a little bit higher and as we can see we did put in our inside bar the great trade for for those who want to know how we trade our inside bars is simply looking for our inside bar and marking a high and a low and so you would have an entry below that, and then there, there you go. Here you got another inside bar. Mark the high and the low, and then there you go. Uh, but regardless of that, what we're starting to see, though, is the market is putting in a new range of 1,300 down, right on down to about 1,200. So uh, what's good is that our... Our 50 moving average, 20 moving average held up as support as they cross back up, but they're not above the 200 yet, but at least the 20 is back above the 50. 
and we'll we'll see what happens from here. Uh, looks like the market is range bound a little bit, and one of the things we talked about when we got all the way up here last week, and we're going to reiterate, is what's going to be the catalyst to move us higher. Sure, we may have the quote unquote Santa Claus run, and we may have already seen it. Uh, but what's going to be the catalyst to kick us into our new range, or are we going to move sideways? As we enter the holidays and some of the big traders start taking their money out, um, it's going to be interesting to see. Now, on a daily, we're pretty much overbought, still a little bit here on MACD, kind of hooking down, RSI's hooking down, so cash is hooking down. So that's saying maybe we have some more room to come back down here and test the 1200 as we zoom out to our weekly time frame to get a larger uh, view of what's going on they're showing us weekly is showing that we have more room to go higher um, and we can see uh, uh, once again this made it a little bit bigger for us here and what we see here is our October move higher and then we have our November candle here so on a weekly, we can see uh, our downtrend line that we're still watching right here. That's coming, going to come in here again at 1300, which matches uh, what we're watching here with our candles here on a weekly. So we're, we're going to watch this range and see. Well, let's take this last week here in November 1220 up to 1300 and see when we break that. Break that. Now we did. This is not an inside bar because we made a low outside of this so we can't necessarily trade this as an inside bar but it's close you know so we definitely want to watch 1300 and we definitely want to watch uh, movies below 1220 to see if we get out of this range and if we get below 1220 well obviously 1200 is going to be a range and possibly back down here to the 200 low we'll go out one more time our weekly again showing that there's more room to go higher so we don't have dual time frame agreement yet and on our monthly time frame we can see here's that down move. Here's our beautiful October uh, taking out this down candle here, which is September, which would lead us to a move higher. Uh, but you would say our, our, our monthly is in agreement with our daily where we're coming out of overbought heading lower. So we got agreement somewhat with the daily and the monthly with the weekly still trying to be a little bullish. Now let's switch on over to the NASDAQ. And we'll see. Uh, we'll see once again this range. Here we came back up here to 2340. And we pause, and again, that matches right up with what we drew over here, wh where we came up with that level. And then we found support at the 20 and 50 million average, but also uh, the line that we, uh, whoops, let me zoom down again, sorry. Had to shrink it down for you. What I was trying to get to show you is where we came in with this uh, 2600 level looking at all the way back in uh, June. Now let me uh, blow that back up again. So there's where these, these lines came from. Uh, and now we see, once again, just like the S&P 500, we came up, tested the top of it, and the bottom of it came in as support. Our daily indicator is showing the same. We're coming out of overbought, heading back down. So showing a pullback is necessary. Um, but again, we see the range that we're watching on a NASDAQ 26 up to 24, 2740-ish. Um, as we go out to the weekly, uh, we can see... Uh, again, our, our October move, where we're at here in November, and whether or not we're going to move higher. And again, we can see the 20 and the 50 moving average, both on a daily and weekly, acting as support. And our indicator saying that there's more room to go higher on a weekly. One more time, out to the monthly. And we can see our move down. Uh, September candle broke on October. 
which would be bullish, but we need a little more confirmation. Again, that's getting above 2740 is 2750s. But our monthly is in agreement with our daily that we're coming out of overbought. So just to sum up, what we're seeing is the market has paused here at the beginning of November. We had a beautiful October. It's breeding and consolidating. And what we need is some type of catalyst that's going to continue this move higher. Could it be the Santa Claus run? Uh, could it be um, uh, some employment economic data? Could it be some stability in the Eurozone with Greece? We don't know yet. Uh, but that's what we're going to need as a catalyst that's going to get us taking out our October high and allow us to go back and test some of our uh, May swing highs. Okay, as we move to our industry leaders, we are going to start off here with Apple. And what we're seeing, last week we talked about what was sideways and it really continued that move. Um, you can see we're kind of stuck in between 410 and down to 390. If we come over here to the market profile, we can see we have some volume support point of control here at 397. Um, so uh, market is definitely moving sideways. Again, if our leaders aren't moving, the market will not lead. So Apple, definitely sideways. Amazon. Amazon. Uh, had some earnings and so we had this drop off the earnings here and then this week was sideways um, caught in a range between 205 and 219 notice that Amazon though because of this earnings drop is now below its 20 and 50 moving average found support at the 200 so we'll have to see but our market profile shows that we've got 215 as our point of control and you can see this just tr trading in a snake range here around that 215 price level so Amazon definitely sideways. Uh, Google. Uh, Google definitely um, sideways after its earnings gapped up. At least it's holding that gap up. 20 moving average after the support. Look at our 20 and 50 moving average moving above the 200. So that's certainly bullish. Um, and we're holding the gap. It didn't fall off like it did the last time. Um, but... Um, definitely uh, Google is sideways market profile we got a point of control here at 596 if we get below 592 there is some room to fall there uh, Goldman Sachs Goldman Sachs finally had a little swing to the upside here you see the downtrend um, but it finally made a move up broke the 50 moving average hit a resistance point and fell down it didn't go sideways it fell back Obviously, we could make a good argument that it, it broke its uptrend line here, so we're we're going to have to see. And of course, we're way below the 200 moving average here. On our market profile, we can see 105 point of control, just kind of snaking around that. Uh, we'll be interested to see if the 20 and 50 here can hold up. Uh, but if Goldman Sachs starts tanking, you know the market may tank with it. Financials lead the market. Uh, the the ultimate example of tankitude is Netflix. Keep in mind, as early as July, $300, and now here we are at $90. Um, uh, another earnings announcement here fell down. At least it's holding here with a little up move, but interesting to see what happens here as we get to the uh, 20 moving average. Point of control here is still at $83. Um, you know, we would have to get it below 86 to run down there and test 83. There still is a little volume here, especially up here at 88. Um, uh, but uh, sideways is the best we can give it so right now we have nothing but sideways charts maybe uh, Goldman Sachs uh, down our last one here is going to be Priceline and Priceline definitely sideways trying to stay above the 20 to 50 to 200 moving average we do have a point of control here at 510 um, another nice volume peak here at 505 and 495, uh, but you can see again with all of this choppiness here. Uh, so we have all of our leaders sideways, no trend, uh, and thus the market didn't trend. And so again, what's going to be our catalyst to get us either to move higher, or are we going to go down and test some of the August lows?
Okay, so here we are talking about the dollar, and again, uh, we'll just zoom out for one quick second so you can see there's our dollar, and there's our uh, September, and there's our Oct October candle, so that's how bad the dollar was. Um, going back to our daily, we can see how good uh, uh, this past week was for the dollar. We did find a little support here at the 75. We talked about the 74.3. Now we're back above the 200 to 20 and the 50 moving average. Still below the 500. We're in a little range here. Finding a little support here. Point of control at 77.25-ish. Uh, um, so we'll have to see uh, if there's a flight to dollar, especially with the issues with the Eurozone and Greece, if there's a flight to dollar. Um, but what's also interesting is with the, a little support found in the dollar, we see that gold is continuing to make a move. Now, it consolidated for a while. You know, so there's our consolidation move. We moved out, tested it, pulled back. But notice that now we've broken out of it and put an inside bar in here. So if we, you know, if we're going to continue to move, we're really going to start testing areas, you know, like 1830s probably. But uh, gold definitely has made a move. Uh, point of control here is 1755, um, so which is basically what was once resistance should now be support. So we definitely want to watch uh, 1770, 1768 to see if our inside bar pans out and we do begin to make a move. But notice back here where we we settled here at 1780. So you know uh, this might be an area to watch even if we do break 1760. Uh, these uh, the, the traders have held this up as support may try to push make it now hold up as resistance also making a little bit of a mood has been crude oil and we can see the move that it's made it's come all the way up here and touched the uh, 200 million gigawatts all the way back up to seven hundred um, ninety five dollars and if we were to scroll back you know you might remember how long we we kind of oscillated around a hundred dollars and the yes gas is back up to three forty four three forty five where I am so um you know uh definitely as the stock market um was weak uh we saw move i'm sorry the dollar was weak we saw gold and the crude oil make a move um but if the dollar can find support, we might find especially crude oil start starting to uh, uh weaken off just a little bit. As we move on to our education spotlight, last week we spent a lot of time talking about the trading process, and a part of that process is having a filter. And basically, a filter is a process, many traders use technical indicators, used to help select potential trades out of a thousand possibilities. And this is really, we're talking about, you know, our stock traders, or even our forex traders, as you have to filter out which pairs you're going to look out. And so, what this filter does is level the playing field and allows you just to focus on high probability trading setups. Again, many people use technical indicators. I personally prefer to use chart patterns. And, you know, again, as we talked about last week, framing a market by looking at support and resistance, identifying the trend, and, and finding those trades that are finding dual time frame agreement. You have to determine what filter works best for you. Um, so that you can not spend all day watching 100 stocks or 20 pairs, but you can focus on the pairs or the stocks of the day. Um, uh, a, a very old school way of looking at it is uh, for each night, as a part of your aftermarket routine, you find 10 stocks if the stock market is up, 10 stocks if the stock market is down, or 10, five pairs if you know the market is up five pairs of the market is, is down and then when you uh, go to your pre-market routine the next day and you look at what the what the futures are saying what the market is saying you can focus on those pairs or those stocks that are working with the trend of the market as to know you can find us on facebook youtube and twitter we have a page on facebook are you financially literate where we focus on personal finance and help you make informed decisions about your financial future, we have our free five-part video course where we focus on helping you frame that market and helping you come up with a filter and come up with a way to um, 
narrow down the market to high probability trades. We hope that gives you a gauge of who we are as coaches and how we can help you one-on-one -on -one develop that personalized trading plan, develop a filter that works for you, help you develop a trader's mindset so that you can follow that system. In addition, we have our, our video course. Notice that it's only $99. It's three portions, an introduction to trading, your trading plan, plan components, and then the trading setups. And again, the reason we're not charging two, three, four thousand dollars like other people, it has all the same information. But we believe the true uh, distinction, the true way to transform your trading results is through coaching. And so we want to give you the information and then give you the coaching you need to implement the system and the, uh, the, the setups uh, that best match who you are as a trader. If you're trading futures, we've got a great uh, futures worker for you, 20 free trades. And they have margins as low as $300. And of course, if you have a charting package, works both on PCs and Macs, help you find those scans to find those biggest moving stocks, help you find the 10 up or the 10 down. Um, we have that for you too. In the end, it doesn't make a difference about your system, your indicator, if you're unable to pull the trigger. You have to have the trader's mindset. You have to be able to back test. But more importantly, once you have a system, you have to be able to pull the trigger. And you get that through discipline. And more importantly, by developing a trader's mindset that understands how to filter, find how to properly trades, and then properly implement them using the proper money management strategies. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.